Here's 10 tips to help you create better digital planners in Canva. Tip number one, copy and paste calendars directly into your Canva table. So if you create tables in Canva, especially calendar tables, instead of manually going in and adding each of the numbers, what you can do is this little shortcut. So go to this website called timeanddate.com and then under calendar, select your calendar. So I'm going to select 2025 and then I'm going to click and drag over all of these numbers. So it looks like this was created using a table. Then I'm going to right click copy, go back to Canva and we're going to select all of these empty cells. So select the Sunday cell, hold shift on your keyboard and then select the bottom right. So all of these are now selected, then press Command V or Control V, depending on whether you have a Windows or Mac to paste it. And all of the dates are now pasted perfectly within the calendar. So make sure you have the same amount of rows and columns from the calendar you're copying into the calendar in Canva. So everything comes out evenly. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday is empty. And it looks like that's correct over here. And so is Saturday. If you don't have the same amount of rows and columns from the calendar you're copying, it's going to paste a little wonky. See how to add these extra days over here. So just make sure you have the same amount of columns and rows. Number two, create beautiful cover graphics using Canva's magic media. So under apps, do a search for magic media. And then here's where you're going to ask your prompt. Tropical leaves with no background mostly green, watercolor. So I usually like adding the style up here versus selecting them down here. It just works better for me. Then click portrait. So since this is a vertical planner, we wanna select portrait and then click generate image. It's gonna take a little bit of time and generate four different images or graphics. So if you like a particular image, you could select it and it will add it to your design. You could always click generate again if you want to generate something different. So it's always going to give you something a little different. So I'm going to select one of the designs and then right click set as background image. You could generate tons of different covers for digital planners and you could even sell them. Tip number three, easily resize your vertical planners into a horizontal version. So I want to resize this particular planner and make it a horizontal planner. So I'm going to click resize at the top, custom size, and then I'm just going to flip this. So it's going to be 11 by 8.5. So make sure you select copy and resize because you want to copy this particular design. And then open, so it's going to open in a new tab. So all you have to do is just shuffle everything. So I'm going to click and drag and I'm going to shuffle it over to the left. So I'm going to resize my table. So I'm gonna select the Sunday cell, hold shift on my keyboard and select this bottom right. So this way everything sizes consistently within the cells. Resize everything down here. So Canva makes it super easy for you to resize everything in bulk by just clicking and dragging over all of the items. So in less than five minutes, I have another completely new design. Tip number four, expand your lines in Canva without it getting wonky. So you could easily do that by holding shift on your keyboard and expanding the line. So that leads me to the next tip, which is easily duplicating lines. So I wanna create this note page. So all I'm going to do is select this line and keep pressing Command D or Control D on my keyboard and then you could click and drag over all the lines. Right click, tidy up. And while they're selected, we could bring them down here. You could also create a perfect column of lines by duplicating your item. And before you deselect it, you're going to select this little circle arrow, position it directly under this line. And before you deselect, click Command D on your keyboard several times or Control D if you have a Windows. So that's how you create a perfect even set of lines. Update fonts and colors in one click. So select the design tab on the left side and then click styles. Here you could select font combinations and color palettes. So I'm going to select combinations and anytime I click one of these previews on the left, my design is going to change. 
so you can easily test out different font combinations and colors for your planner designs. The next tip is copy style. So let's say I want to make this font match this particular title. So I'm going to select the title, then click the little copy style icon at the top toolbar and select my font. So it copies the font, the effects, even the size. So I don't have to actually go in and manually update everything up here. The next tip is a quick table shortcut. So instead of having to go and select and add additional rows, I could actually just select this last row and then click tab on my keyboard. Continue clicking tab and it will add additional rows to your table. So the next tip is changing my digital planner to a printable planner. So all you have to do is just delete all of the tabs. You could even delete the spirals if you'd like. So I'm actually going to delete all the spirals, delete the little paper, any additional shadows, and then I'm going to select the background and change it to white. And I'm also going to edit the rules and guides. So I want to set the rule to half an inch from the left. So this is an eight and a half by 11 design. And then I'm going to add rules from the top and the bottom. So now I have a half an inch of margin on each side. And then I can just click and drag everything and resize it. So I turned my weekly digital planner page into a printable friendly version. I typically like to remove any background colors as well as any elements bleeding to the edge because that will probably get cut off in print. You want to make it as simple as possible so it's printer friendly. So what are the best types of fonts for digital planners? So I typically like to use headlines and larger fonts and serif fonts and then I keep smaller fonts like these subheads or even tabs in a sans serif font. So sans serif fonts don't have those little edges, those little ornate edges on the edge of each of the letters. They're very easy to read. They're good for paragraph text. Sometimes I do use serif fonts on smaller items, but you just want to make sure that the font is easy to read, especially when it's very small like this. If any of these Canva tips have been helpful, comment below. And let me know if you want to see more videos like this.